Recently, I've started publishing a few chapbooks at Shortwave. These are stories 12 to 24 pages long with full color cardstock covers and black and white interiors. I thought it might be fun to walk you through the process of producing a chapbook from start to finish. Once I have found a story and made a deal with the author to publish it, I usually start with cover art. I'm a very visual person, and my focus in college was graphic design, so giving each project a cover really early uh, helps me give each product a uh, identity. I use Photoshop or Affinity Photo for my design work and present these covers to the authors for feedback or approval, and I work with them to make sure that they really represent the story while also being aesthetically pleasing. After the cover art and after the story has been edited and professionally proofread, I get to work on the interior layout. Some special or graphic heavy pages are designed in Photoshop, but mostly I do this layout work in Affinity Publisher. Each chapbook has running headers, gorgeous industry standard layout and design, and some chapbooks like Caitlin's feature exclusive illustrations. Then it's time to print. I have two printers that I utilize. Uh, the first is a black and white laser printer that produces all the interior pages with duplex printing on standard multi-purpose paper. This footage is slightly sped up, but the printer is really quick. The second printer is a large format full color inkjet printer that produces the cover. Our chapbook covers are printed on heavy 110 pound cardstock. Uh, this gives them a bit more of a premium feel and offers a proper cover versus using standard paper covers. The cardstock also offers better color saturation than standard paper does. Um, this process is quite a bit slower than the interior laser printing. Once everything's printed, it's time to assemble. First, I collate all the interior pages and set them up for easy sorting. For Mama Bird, Clay signed and numbered 100 signature pages, uh, so those had to be collated separately as I had shipped him a box of only the title pages to sign. For Caitlin's chapbook, we opted instead to include signed art prints that she had produced locally. Next, I score each one of the cardstock covers individually. Uh, this step isn't necessary, but it does provide a more consistent product. The scoring machine will give a, a nice, clean, straight line to bind and fold along later on. Unfortunately, these have to be done one at a time. After that, there's more collating, putting covers on each set of the interior pages. Then it's time to bind. These long arm staplers are amazing. In the industry, chapbooks that are stapled are usually referred to as saddle stitched, um, as unbound chapbooks would be laid on a saddle and stapled that way before long arm staplers became the norm. And because we did the scoring earlier, our stitched chapbooks now fold easily and cleanly. No paper buckling or uneven creases. The time we invested in scoring is more than made up for in this step, and the cost of replacing those full color covers if we were to make a mistake folding now. Printer ink is the most expensive liquid on earth, I'd hate to waste even one of these. Finally, we're ready to pack these beauties up, making sure to include a shortwave publishing bookmark with each one, and send them all over the world. This is easier to do when you're not trying to demo the process for the camera, so excuse my fumbling. I use these sturdy stay flats to protect each copy as it travels to your mailbox. And that's the process, uh, from a short story word doc to a limited edition chapbook in your home library. If you're interested in our current chapbook titles, including the two I showed in this video, head over to shortwavepublishing.com where you can view our entire catalog with links that will take you directly to our shop. Thanks for watching and happy reading.